Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Rosbrook. Uh, I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the Hospital for Special Surgery and the Limb Lengthening and Complex Reconstruction Service. What we're going to do is a preoperative educational video for patients who are about to undergo uh, bone lengthening using the precise internal lengthening rod. Um, this is designed to basically give information to a patient who's about to have surgery so that they understand the procedure, understand what they can expect, and sort of the post-operative routine. So the procedure that I want to go through is bone lengthening of the femur using the precise nail. There are a variety of techniques that can be used to lengthen a bone, but it's worth spending a moment just talking about bone lengthening. What we do is we cut the bone and we pull the bone apart slowly, typically at a rate of one millimeter per day, and since bone has regenerative ability, new bone will grow in the gap. Traditionally, this was done with the use of an external fixator, a scaffold that was built on the outside of the leg. And that is a technique that has worked very, very well and very predictably. However, the fixator is cumbersome. And the fact that we have a, a way to do this now with an internal lengthening device is a really big advantage for patients. It's more predictable, there's less problems with pin sites and infections, it's less painful, and the overall process has a much easier and quicker recovery. If you're going to lengthen a femur, um, it could be done by putting the rod in either from the top of the bone or from the bottom of the bone. But the typical way, and most often it's put in from the top of the bone, and what's called an antegrade nailing technique. Okay, So I'm going to show you using a plastic bone to demonstrate this technique. If I have a femur, this is the top of the femur, this is the bottom of the femur, this is the hip, this is the knee. So when I'm doing a bone lengthening on the femur, what I'm going to do is insert the rod through a very small incision in the skin through the tip of the bone. The tip of the bone allows me access to the marrow cavity called the intramedullary canal. I cut the bone sort of in the middle of the bone, and I fixate the bone with this rod. This is, this is an example of the precise nail. So the precise nail is a, a rod that goes inside the marrow cavity of the bone. It has interlocking screws that hold it in the bone, and it has um, a telescopic feature, which means this part of the rod will actually expand, and that's how the bone is lengthened and there's a little magnet inside the rod that is used to extend it and that's what gives us the uh, precise control of the mechanism. So when I'm doing this surgery, um, what I do is I make a small incision and enter the bone here. I cut the bone here, the rod is inserted through the bone and the lengthening process ensues. So what I'd like to do is show you some images on my computer screen here. So this is one patient who underwent a lengthening. And what you're seeing on this set of x-rays here is a front view of the femur. The rod has been inserted through the top of the femur. This is the osteotomy or the bone cut. This is right after the lengthening before any real distraction has been done. These are the locking screws that hold the place. This is the magnet with inside, within the nail. And what you're seeing here is the bone has been lengthened by four centimeters. The bone has filled in beautifully and is completely strong and solid. And this patient is full weight bearing without any limitations. You can see that the telescopic part of the rod has expanded and that's how the length has been obtained. This is a patient who has a leg length discrepancy. You can see that the pelvis is oblique, showing that the right side, which is this side, is lower because of a shortening in the femur bone. These are some steps from the operating room. This is how we enter the bone through the top of the femur. We make a small hole in the bone to enter the marrow cavity. We insert the rod up to the osteotomy site. The osteotomy is completed with an osteotome or a surgical chisel. And then once that is done, the rod is then passed across the osteotomy. So this is what it looks like again. This is the osteotomy. This is after 25 days of distraction, and you can see the gap that is formed and the early bone formation present. And so you can see this little, this little box here is actually the magnet in the rod. 
It's very apparent on an x-ray. And what we do is we mark on the skin exactly where that location is. In this x-ray, you can see that the lengthening has completed and the bone healing is progressing. And at this point, you can see the bone is fully solid with complete bridging without any limitations whatsoever. When a patient is having this surgery, they can expect to have a regional anesthetic, which means it's a spinal epidural type of anesthetic. It's not necessary to have general anesthesia. The blood loss is minimal. The actual time for surgery is typically one and a half to two hours, and the hospital stay is typically two days. It's very important that people work on movement of the adjacent joints. So if we're doing a femur lengthening, we spend a lot of time stressing the importance of working on knee range of motion. You gotta work on flexion of the knee and extension of the knee and the rehab that goes along with that. So this is typically done both with a physical therapist and also on your own. We give you exercises, we show you how to do it. They're not very complicated. It's basically about bending your knee while you're doing a femur lengthening. There is a natural tendency after this surgery for the knee to become stiff. And as the lengthening progresses, the muscles tighten and that further causes stiffness of the knee. So by doing these exercises, you prevent stiffness of the knee and you can maintain your mobility. It's not uh, very difficult. And again, compared to um, the use of an external fixator, which is what we used to do, the recovery is much, much simpler, much more easy. The second thing that is really important is weight-bearing limitation. While the lengthening process is going on, the rod itself is supporting the entire bone and the entire leg. So in the beginning, when the bone is separated, all of the stress is on the rod. So the rod, you cannot uh, put full weight on the leg during that part of the treatment. So during this lengthening phase, and until the bone fills in to a certain degree, it's really important to be limited weight bearing. Now that might be 30 pounds, it might be 50 pounds, or it might be 70 pounds of partial weight bearing. It really depends on the size of the rod. The rods, the precise rods come in three different diameters, 8.5, 10.7, and 12.5. The size that we use depends on the size of the, um, the bone. We always try to put in the largest rod that the bone will take. So for example, if I, if I do a femur lengthening and I use a 10.7 millimeter um, rod or nail, we use rod and nail interchangeably, then the limitation on weight bearing is going to be 50 pounds. And that will continue until there's enough bone in the gap to support things. So let's use a four centimeter lengthening as an example. If we did a four centimeter lengthening, we would start the lengthening process about four to five days after the surgery. The first few days we wait for the bone healing cells to migrate to the area. The lengthening then progresses typically at one millimeter per day. So for a 40 millimeter lengthening, it would take 40 days. During that period of time, we see patients for post-operative visits every two weeks and monitor things with an x-ray. We look at the distraction, make sure everything is coming along nicely. At the end of 40 days, I would expect the patient to have achieved the full length. At that point, we would check the leg lengths and make sure that they're equal. If additional lengthening needs to be done, we have the ability to do that. Limitation of weight bearing would then continue for approximately another six to eight weeks until that bone hardens in the gap. And once it hardens in the gap, then the patient can be full weight bearing. So the typical amount of time that a person would need to be using crutches for a four centimeter lengthening would probably be somewhere in the area of about three and a half months. Everybody's gonna be a little bit different. It depends on how quickly the bone heals. Younger patients tend to heal a little faster. Older patients tend to heal a little bit slower, but that's the general time frame. So at the end of the um, distraction phase, once the length is obtained, we continue to monitor um, the healing. Once we get to the point where there's enough healing in the bone gap, I allow patients to be full weight bearing. During that period of time, they're progressing their activities, they're going to the gym, they're getting strong, they're working out their muscles, and the rehabilitation really, really progresses. The bone continues to get stronger and stronger and 
at some point becomes completely normal. The rod itself does need to come out and I typically remove the rods at one year. Rod removal is a very simple procedure and it's done in the same way that we insert it, just the opposite. So I make a small incision, the rod is typically accessible through a little um, portal right at the tip of the bone and then I'm able to pull the rod out after I pull out the locking screws. That's an ambulatory surgery done in and out on the same day without any difficulties. There's always a precaution about not going into an MRI machine because there is a magnet inside the rod. We do supply all patients with a little bracelet that uh, identifies that they have a magnetic rod in their leg and cautions against the use of an MRI. Um, but other than that, really the only precautions are that of weight bearing in the early phase before the bone is fully healed. All in all, I would tell you that we have had a wonderful experience um, with bone lengthening using the internal lengthening rod. I've been uh, doing this type of surgery for uh, almost 20 years now and I have done thousands of bone lengthening surgeries. The use of the external fixator was a great device and it's still something that we use when we need to. But for standard bone lengthening, the use of an internal lengthening rod has made the patient experience so much easier. It has revolutionized the field of bone lengthening. We're here today for a first post-operative visit with Phil, who had a um, internal lengthening done on his left femur. November 17, 2012, at the present time, I was a battalion chief in the New York City Fire Department. I belonged to a motorcycle club called the Leathernecks. They're all Marines. I was meeting uh, the members at a party. Uh, I was only going 25 miles an hour on a motorcycle, and I got T-boned on my left side by a vehicle making a left. He snapped my leg. I don't know how bad at the time, but I knew it was snapped. I, I went, got rushed to the Nassau County Medical Center. They stabilized me with, bar, with, a, with a bar and X-fix and then they worked on it. They worked on me for about eight months. Uh, back and forth, they took the X-fix off. I went from a crutch to a cane. Uh, now I was on severe pain. So then I, I, they recommended to me that uh, if I wanted to lose, the, not be on painkillers forever, that I, it is an option to uh, remove my leg from below the knee. Phil's story was a very complicated um, lower leg and ankle injury, and it led to him losing 3.2 centimeters of bone in the leg. And uh, because the leg bone is very, very tenuous, we decided to make up the leg length difference by doing the lengthening in the femur. And so this is the first post-op visit. Surgery was just two weeks ago. Yes, two weeks. And uh, as you can see, Phil's already on crutches, moving about, and quite mobile. So what I want to do, Phil, is show you some of the x-rays from okay. surgery. So in surgery, just to review a couple of things, you know, the femur bone, we enter the femur bone through that small little incision on your leg, and I'll show that afterward, mm -hmm. um, by making a small little hole, and that gives me access to the marrow cavity, because bones are hollow on the inside. Yes. Here you can see the rod going in. These are the locking screws that are holding it in place, so that's the femur. This is the osteotomy, the bone cut, which is non-displaced, and what you're seeing here is the actual the, you're actually seeing the magnet inside the rod. Okay. So the, the dot that we put on your skin yes. to mark the magnet is exactly corresponding to that location. So that's what I do, mark it so that this way we know exactly where to put that external magnet controller that you've been using for the last, for the last two weeks. Right. So this is the femur. And what you're seeing here is you're seeing the rod in place. This is the magnet. Correct. And you see this little gap here? Yes. Measuring 14 millimeters exactly. That's the 14 days of distraction that you've been doing. Okay. So this part, the telescopic part, has elongated, and you can see the gap that is starting to develop in the wow. in the bone. Yeah. You see how you see how the, there's that white fuzz in there? Yeah. That's all the new bone that's already starting to grow in the at the osteotomy so side. So even though I'm stretching it, she still wants it to grow. Exactly. Exactly. Right. The bone is growing as we're stretching. All right. So here's the magnet. That's what's causing. That's moving this little gear mechanism. And then this is the distraction rod that is pushing out. And okay. you're doing the distraction three times a day at this point. Correct. Very, very um, controlled, a total of a millimeter per day. Obviously, you're the doctor, so you would know better than me. But um, if you look at the tibia, 
how mangled the tibia was. And I also have a, a piece of my hip in the tibia. So rather than mess with drilling that out and doing it down there, we went for the femur, yes, which is exactly. a home run. So far, it looks like a home run. It's going to be a home run. So you're using two crutches. You're able to get up and about. Yeah. You don't have to hop. You can put some weight right. on the leg, but not more than 70 pounds. Correct. People always ask, well, how do you know how much 70 pounds is? And the simplest way at this point is just put your um, left leg on a bathroom scale and see what 70 pounds feels like, yes. and then just try to reproduce that. That's exactly right. And then just did. practice that every every morning, and you'll be safe. Yeah. Phil, you can see you have very little swelling in the leg. It actually looks really good. This is where the bone cut was done. Now these are steri strips because we just took out your stitches. A tiny little incision where the bone cut was made. Mm -hmm. These are the distal screws and these are the proximal screws. But you can see very, very minimal incision type of surgery. Now over here, we've got the mark that we reinforced. This is exactly where the magnet is, right? And that's where you're putting that external magnet yes. controller. And you've been doing a great job because you've been doing it for 14 days and we're measuring 14 millimeters. So we are spot on. The accuracy has been fantastic. So you've got great full extension of your knee. That's great. Uh, and let's see you bend it up. And give me your best bend. That's good. And you're getting about 70 degrees at this point. And for this, um, for this point after the surgery, only two weeks, that's just perfect. Okay, you'll just keep working on that. Now, if you notice, you see in this position, if you keep your thigh on the bed, mm -hmm. it naturally falls into a flexed position. And so you can see, and we can check the exact number, and you've got a solid 70 degrees. Now, what you can do is take this leg, mm -hmm. put it in front of this one, okay. and you can, you can give it a push. Yep. So give it a nice push, hold it, one, two, three, four, five, and then relax. That's another really good way, and you can do 15 of those repetitions yeah. as well. Yeah, so besides gravity helping me, I take my good leg, exactly. and I'll go one, two, three, four, five. You Got keep it. doing that, you're going to have full motion within a couple of weeks. Oh, I will. All right, Thank buddy. you. Good seeing you, Phil. Good job. I'll see you in a couple of weeks.